good afternoon or evening, depending on your time zone. For me, it's an evening. So let's talk about the five categories of needs for a female. This is what she mate selects off of. These are, these are what her primal brain drives her towards mate selection. Um, I'm going to keep this one short. I've been actually talking about this for a few years now, but I realize I've only referenced it in videos, but I've never actually broken this down uh, in a clear format. So I'm going to do that for you here today. Um, you'll find this useful when you're you know, trying to evaluate women in your life and figuring out what is motivating them to make decisions. Okay. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a background first. So this kind of starts for me anyways, discovery of this with evolutionary psychology and a couple of different theories. One is uh, strategic pluralism theory and another one is uh, the, the fitness indicator uh, hy hypothesis. Okay, so a couple of things I had read about a long time ago uh, when I got like when I first started reading about this stuff and um, and so the fitness indicator uh, determines that women are, are, are mate selecting based off of um, either short term, well, well, sorry, not short, but either either genetic traits or long term, the ability for um, uh, providing resources. Okay, so that's basically it, either genetic traits or providing resources. Um, and then um, fitness indicator hypothesis is determining that short, it basically says that w uh, is along the same lines, but it's they're looking at the physical characteristics and how masculine or physically strong or fit a person is and they're finding out that when a woman is looking for short-term mating uh, strategies like basically getting 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 nailed okay um, <laughs> that she's looking for a more masculine dominant man but she's not necessarily looking for that for long-term mates okay so that and so th that's the two theories and you know coming across that um, what solidified those theories really well was then Rolla Tomasi's uh, first book, The Rational Male, which I recommend picking up. It's kind of foundational to anything I talk about, so you know you're going to want to read that, okay, at some point um, sooner than later, all right? But he he basically termed it, or you know, came up with the term. I think he came up with the term alpha fucks and beta bucks, okay? So that's the idea. The you know it's it's these two competing strategies between alpha characteristics or you know, beta characteristics that, that they're cho you're choosing for. So long-term beta bucks provider stuff or short-term alpha fucks, you know, uh, genetic traits, okay? Um, and, and then later, uh, probably a few years ago, had discussions, because I, dis I nerd out with all this stuff with different professionals, and I had a discussion with a, I think it was a licensed professional counselor, had mentioned that someone wrote a book and it's a counselor now I don't have the reference for this so if I find the reference I will reference it okay because this is I probably read more and forgotten more things at this point over the past decade or so than, than what I remember to reference but this was a, uh, a, a counselor had determined just through her therapy she had no background in evolutionary psych but she determined in her therapy that there were five categories that women seem to be choosing a mate based off of these five categories. And so I've look, I looked at that and it was kind of in, in, in light of evolutionary psychology, in light of, the, of, of Rolla Tomasi's findings, especially his timeline to, if you go through his timeline of, uh, you know, kind of where mating decisions happen for a female along, depending on what part of, what stage of her life she's in, it, it, it all came together pretty well with these five categories. And I've, I've more or less made them my own at this point because again this is a this is a conversation I had and then I I, I, I referenced the I read about it referenced the person then forgot because and it was like had to have been like six years ago that this happened so but the five categories are as follows okay so she's looking for these needs okay desires to be met one is sexual needs two is emotional needs three is security needs Four is paternity needs. Paternity, like, is he going to be a good dad? Okay. And five is legacy needs, meaning is he going to build the life with me? All right. So that's what was determined as five categories um, of needs for a woman. Now, that ties into the, um, the strategic pluralism or alpha bucks, <laughs> alpha, <laughs> alpha fucks, beta bucks um, strategy when you break these categories down. So when you look at it, 
you know, so her, her sexual needs, what is she looking at? She's looking for dominant characteristics and she's looking for physically attractive characteristics, which is what? Genetic characteristics, right? So that's, that's your alpha stuff, all right? Your alpha behaviors, your alpha looks, okay? Fall in line with sexual needs, okay? You can be a billion, you can be a billionaire, you can have a billion dollars in your pocket, all right? But if you're a billion, you have a billion dollars in your pocket and you're a short, stumpy guy who doesn't know how to dress, smells weird, and has a pot belly, sexual attraction is probably not going to be there. She might have sex with you because you have a billion dollars. You get what I'm saying? But the, for, for her sexual needs to be met, she's looking for someone she is physically aroused by. All right? And that's going to be based on what you look like and how you behave. All right? And so behaving in an attractive manner versus not and maximizing your looks that's the sexual needs. Now, emotional needs are also an alpha trait. You know, th th she's looking for alpha traits. Why do I say that? Because when I say emotional, I don't mean you puking up your emotions on her, okay? I mean that she feels emotionally drawn to you. She's going to feel emotionally drawn to a guy with alpha traits and alpha characteristics, even when he's not being very nice to her. All right, so that, that's, that's important to recognize because she's looking for that stability and ability to handle her emotions. Now that could be just being a good listener, being a good decision maker, or that could mean, you know, you know basically not putting up with her drama and her bullshit. I mean, it could be a number of things, but it's not so much like the emotions, like what you think, but it's being drawn to this person emotionally, having that emotional att attachment to this person. Believe me, when you're the beta workhorse provider, she does not have an emotional draw and, attra and attachment to you. The same way that she does for an alpha guy that she's, you know, sexually attracted to and just aroused by. You know what I'm saying? And so when she has that arousal, that emotional draw and need follows. And it, and it, and it stands to reason that that's the case. It makes sense when you look at neurochemicals, right? I mean, so all of the high sexual drive needs towards somebody also what what follows that is other neurochemicals that involve pair bonding right so sex is a, a paramount or a cornerstone for every relationship and so you know the pair bonding mechanisms and chemicals that draw her emotionally to you she's drawn to you for your alpha characteristics okay so we have sexual needs she needs met she, we have emotional needs Third one is security. Now, security is interesting because that is both, in my opinion, an alpha and a beta on the alpha and beta side of things, okay? So the, um, the part of the security that's on the alpha side is the, abil is the ability to whip some ass and the ability to accumulate resources. So if you are capable of accumulating resources and being successful, right, that's uh, an alpha trait, okay? If you can protect her physically, that is an alpha trait. And all those things lend to security, okay, security needs. Now where security needs are, are uh, start to cross over into the beta side of things and beta behaviors is will you spend those resources on her? All right, so if you're willing to spend the resources on her, that's more what we could call more beta type characteristics, more long-term provisioning, planning characteristics, okay? Um, fourth category is uh, paternity, you know? Are you so alpha that you're going to kill the baby, <laughs> right? I mean, not that that's necessarily an alpha thing to do, but you get what I'm saying. Are you like some violent guy going to kill the baby? Are you going to be a, are you going to be a good dad? And so when she's vetting for a mate, you know, when she's looking at her five needs that she's vetting for, she's looking for paternity signals. Will you be a good dad, okay? Do you have nurturing characteristics? This is where your emotions come in, all right? So your ability to be nurturing and all that stuff, She's drawn to that, not because of arousal. She doesn't want to have sex with you because of how emotional you are. I promise you that. But she may be drawn towards you in awe, you know, because you're good with a puppy, all right, <laughs> or whatever, it may, or you show compassion. And so the reason that that is an attractive thing is because if she ever has a baby with you, then she knows that you will be a good, you know, uh, patriarchal figure for that child and you will, you will be a, a good hand in raising that child and that is a primal need, a primal drive. All right, so then the fifth one is, is legacy and that, that, it's not just loyalty, it's actually wanting to build. Loyalty is part of it. I mean, so are you gonna mate switch? Are you gonna leave her and the child for somebody else? Or are you gonna build a life for her? Are you gonna discard her when she's 50 years old 
because to find a younger model you know what i mean these are all questions and concerns a female has so she's concerned with legacy meaning like planning for the future do you want a future with this person so when you are signaling talk when you hand her that ring and you tell her how much you love her and you want to you know be with her forever and all that crap that guys do all right that's that's beta stuff all right but it is a need or a draw she has to know that you're not going to discard her for someone else if she's making a long-term mating decision all right or short-term whatever mating decision she's making depending on what that decision is she may be putting legacy as a priority so those are the five categories okay so sex emotion security paternity legacy those are the five categories and they can be split into the alpha fucks side of things okay or the beta bucks side of things um for a long-term monogamous relationship or even semi-monogamous relationship to last uh, with any for any length of time you have to satisfy all five of these needs her hypergamous needs are uh, her hypergamy or, or need to constantly have the best deal okay is based off of all five of these as well all right so um, and, and, again, and again notice like for example like security isn't just money you know what I mean because a guy could have a ton of money but provide no real security for her because he can't beat ass, he doesn't have any protective qualities, and he doesn't have a desire to take care of her with that money, really, or maybe he squanders it, or maybe just his behaviors demonstrates that he's not um, a secure, maybe he's in tax arrears and, you know, owes money to the IRS, or who knows, right? So the fact that he has a Ferrari and is, is rich might not actually signal security for her, you know? And so she has to feel, it's all about her subjective feelings, remember, because that's what's making the decisions for her. It's all about her subjectivity. All right, so even on the instinct, hindbrain side of it, it's the subjective nature of these things. She has to feel that these five categories are being met. Now, here's the dilemma for females, though. Try to focus and really concentrate on five priorities at any given time. It's very difficult to do that, all right? As, as human beings, we're good at focusing on one or two things. Um, you start getting into five things, it's like too many things, right? Now, add to the, into the mix, of course, the... Um, duplicitous nature of uh, female sexual decisions and them not knowing what the hell they're doing so now you have five categories that are driving your behavior and you don't even know what those five things really are you have like hints of them you sort of know but you really don't know right and so this is why females are making main decisions and they really don't understand what they're doing and this is why going along with uh, we'll call it the Tomasi timeline you know where the young girl is really looking for the alpha fox and all that what is she looking for she's looking for getting her sexual needs met you know so sexual need needs are met she's not thinking a legacy or long-term planning she's not thinking of paternity at that point either you know what I'm saying she might she's looking for those alpha characteristics when she's 21 so it's sexual needs and then in that emotional draw but of course, then she's, you know, the tw average 21 year old chick is in like a dilemma, right? Because she's drawing towards the alpha guy for sexual needs, and then he's, of course, discarding her and being a dick. So then she has the beta, you know, she has the emotional tampon that she'll dump all her emotions on, who she's not giving sex to. And, you know, of course, he wants to be with her and wants sex, but he's uh, in a covert contract with her. And,. Um, you know, and listening to all of her bullshit while she gets hurt by the alpha guy. You know, this is like the average 21 year old's life in emotional basket cases because their ovaries are screaming at them to have sex with the biggest asshole that they can find. And so, you know, they're trying to have sex with the biggest asshole that they can find because he has the most masculine traits. And that's what her, her, her little hindbrain is driving her towards. And then, but she has these emotional needs as well. And so she's, dumping those on the uh, the the the, uh, the beta emotional tampon guy right and so then she as she grows older she reaches you know what uh, Rolo calls the epiphany stage you know and it's uh, and now she starts thinking of oh man I gotta settle down you know she's she's just 28 29 years old now she, the sexual interest isn't there for her that it, that in the say at the same level that it was when she was 21 you know she knows the impending wall is coming and that uh, she's probably not getting any, you know, hotter in her old age or whatever. I mean, of course, there are some exceptions to that, but we know what that is, right? We know what the wall is, if you've been paying attention to <laughs> anything on this stuff. So, I mean, you know, we, we know that she's, she's looking at her, you know, potentiality for not being able to secure 
a good partner, you know, uh, in, in that, that potentiality goes down every single day. So what's she doing? You know, she's, she's, she, her needs shift now. She starts looking for paternity. She starts looking for security. You know what I mean? And, and so see how those needs will shift. But then what happens when those needs shift, she shelves her other needs, right? She stops thinking so much about, she starts compromising those other needs. So the sexual needs she compromises on, the Chad that used to bang her out, that gave her the, the, the biggest sexual arousal that she's ever had, she kind of shelves that to, you know, marry, uh, you know, marry Brent, you know what I mean? The nice guy, okay? And, and you see that's the nice guy who's the accountant who will never be Chad. You know, she she goes towards that because she's thinking of paternity. Well, he's and then she starts looking at that checklist thing in her head. Well, he's gonna be a, he's such a good dad, and you know he makes good money. You know he this and that and the other, right? She starts doing the checklist thing. Sexual arousal is at mid level at best, and then she marries the guy. You see, and so these are the mistakes women make because they have these five needs that often compete with each other. And again, the five needs can be categorized into that alpha or beta trait categories, right? Um, and so, oh, and then what happens when she divorces Brett or whatever his name was that I gave him? You know, she's now approaching, she's now a cougar, okay? Maybe she's approaching 40. And so she's back to looking to get her sexual needs met. Um, but then after she gets slammed by a few uh, mid-20-year-olds at the bar who have no desire to have any long-term anything with her, um, then she kind of goes back into looking at, at legacy as a need. So a, you know, she starts looking for, well, I'm not going to have kids anymore, you know, and getting slammed out is great, but I need somebody who's going to provide for me and be f there for me in my old age. So now she's looking at building, you know, uh, when she's in her like forties, right? She's looking at who's going to build with me for the rest of my life. You know, whose resources can I have? We're building <laughs> to, to achieve my goals who can I achieve who's going to help me achieve my goals with their resources that is what the uh, the legacy needs are right and that's a beta characteristic that's a beta category see and so I could keep going with this video we're already too long into it but there's a lot to go with this but those are five categories they're important to understand because this is where where she's at in her life her life stages and all that. She's not aware of these things, but she's putting one or two of these categories in the forefront of her decision making. And depending on what she's looking for, what she's wired, like a gold digger type girl, for example, is put, putting security needs first. For example, where you know some older chick might be again looking for legacy needs over sexual needs and some of those things, right? Um, epiphany stage, 28, 29 year old is looking to settle down, might be looking and have kids is now looking at security and paternity. You know, those needs are now in the forefront, you see. Um, but, uh, you know, what this means though, before I let the video end here or before I end it, is okay, what you don't want to do though, here's the mistake, is you don't want to go, cool, there's five categories. So I'm not the alpha fucks guy I'm not the guy she's looking for for sexual needs necessarily I may be average and that for her she's probably had better sexual experiences I don't know well guys never think this way they usually just ignore this whole idea because they're insecure so they don't want to look at it and then they go well if I just boost up my beta provider you know stuff if I just I'm gonna care for her I'm gonna build with her I'm gonna tell her I want to put a ring on her and be with her forever, you know, and provide, I'm going to make good money and be a good provider and provide for my family. Okay. All that beta stuff, guys will just like latch onto that and think I'm going to be safe. She's going to stick with me, love me, be with me the rest of my life. Everything's going to be good. And I can't stress enough how fucking wrong that is. All right. So that's a huge mistake because even though there's these five categories that she's selecting on, you can't negotiate desire, all right? Desire is not a negotiable thing. You can always make more money. You can always be a better parent, all right? You can always choose to build with somebody, you know, and, and you could work on, you could be an alpha guy and work on, you know, some of your behaviors so you can be a little bit more nurturing or better for somebody for long-term relationships. But you can't negotiate her sexual desire and her attraction and her draw to you. Her emotional draw and her sexual desire for you is not a negotiable thing. 
through game and through maximizing who you are, you can increase that intensity and capability, right? But it's not a negotiable thing. Her genetic, she's made a certain way genetically and you're made a certain way genetically. And it even comes down to sense of smell sometimes and pheromones, whether or not she is drawn to you or not. And so if she was drawn to, to, to Chad two exes ago, two ex-boyfriends ago, and not drawn to you in the same way, it will not be a successful relationship. Because as a man, your needs, as a man, are much more narrow than hers. You need someone who's hot, sexually available, and who sexually desires you. Those are your needs, okay? And then isn't going to bring a bunch of drama and complications into your life and is going to be a good person to be around, right? When you're not banging. Okay, so I mean, your needs are much more narrow, all right, as a man. And what guys need from a female in order to feel like he's worth the shit and have a successful relationship with her is he needs to feel that she loves him. But what does love mean? It means ex well, part of that is respect and, it, and admires him. She has a, a deep respect and a deep admiration for him and she's sexually drawn to him. She's sexually aroused him. That's how you know that you're loved. Okay, as a man, you don't, you won't, Feel love the way that you that that you're looking for the love you're looking for from a female, not the I love you but I'm not in love with you kind of love, okay? But the kind of love where they're 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 aroused by you, they're drawn to you, they want to be close to you, near you, with they want. It's not transactional. They want your validation. They want your your closeness. They want your intimacy. They want your they want your dick. You know, they want all of it, okay? They, they want that, that part of you. They're so drawn to you, and then they respect who you are. They have a deep respect for you. They have an admiration to you because they look up to you, all right? That is satisfying hypergamy, all right? As a man, that is what you need. Making a bunch of money, spending a bunch of money on her, and being a good provider and a good dad and telling her how much you love her and how you're going to spend the rest of her life with her, all those beta things, the security side of beta, the, the paternity side, and let's have a family together, the legacy side, let's build and grow all together. Not saying they're not important, but those things will not get you what you need as a man, which is desire, sexual desire, love, admiration, respect. Okay, so if you want those things, that's where you need to bring the alpha characteristics to the table to satisfy those first two needs emotional draw and sexual needs and the side of security you know that's on the alpha side the protective qualities and ability to accumulate resources those are the things you need to bring all right for her to have the the kind of love for you that you're looking for the other things okay you bring those two but you bring those two so she can have the comfort for a long-term relationship She'll still bang you for the other ones. That's the reason she's banging you. She's not really banging you unless it's transactional for the beta needs. But she will have the comfort of not being overcome with anxiety, okay, and, and needing to create and spin out of control, create drama, and end the relationship because she has no comfort. There's a certain amount of tension that happens with, with a woman between arousal, desire, and uncertainty, and then comfort. Okay, and those have to be that that tension has to be there, but it also has to be balanced out a little bit. If it's too much tension and anxiety, she will. This is when she cheats on the alpha, leaves the alpha, throws a brick through his window, all that kind of stuff, right? But of course, if it's too much comfort, which most guys start bringing the comfort heavy once they get into that long term relationship. You know, it's like, oh, let's dump all the comfort on her because I want her to know that I love her and I'm going to build with her and be a good father. Okay, all that bullshit makes her dry in the the no-no area. Okay, <laughs> all right. It, fuck, I'm talking about it. It's late. But you know what I'm saying? It, it, it dries her out, makes her very unaroused by you, okay? Too much of the comfort. So she needs just enough of that comfort stuff sprinkles of those comfort things okay so that she feels secure enough to continue to have the arousal for you that's how she will be satisfied and getting those needs satisfied 
as you go along if if whether it's long-term relationship or short-term you know what i'm saying you always want to bring that alpha those alpha traits forward that's what you lead with you, you lead with the alpha always 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 okay so that's it 25 minutes i was gonna make this five minute video but holy shit i guess i like to uh this is a very big and long topic though this is one of those topics we could really talk a long time about and a lot about there's a lot here but hopefully that gives you the introduction that I'm looking for okay kind of introduces you if you haven't heard about it but most of you a lot of you listen to me have okay the whole alpha bucks alpha bucks <laughs> alpha fucks <laughs> alpha seed beta need tell you it's it's a, been a long day alpha seed beta need okay you've heard of that if you haven't heard of that go pick up rational mail and read it excellent book it's foundational okay um, and then if you're an Evo psych, you may have heard some of these principles brought up or whatever, but you know, it, this, these five understanding the five needs though is kind of ties us together really well. It puts things in really good perspective for you as a man going forward. All right. So thanks for listening. Uh, any questions, hit me up. Um, comments, concerns, hit me up, subscribe, please. I'm trying to reach a fair amount of subscribers so I can keep doing this and affecting people in a positive way so I need your subscription and if you've already subscribed share this with a friend and tell them to subscribe and be alpha about it you know tell them to fucking do it all right don't sit there and be like meow meow you know here's a video you know, tell them say hey subscribe to this dude he's pretty cool I like him all right so so get out there help me out so I can keep helping you out thanks again talk to you later